lots of stuff to cover. Uh, okay, um, the Arctic, Arctic sovereignty, use it or lose it. So uh, we're going to go to my country. And yes, this is a World War Three update. It, it's kind of a, what you're seeing down here between, or sorry, between Japan and China over the Senkaku, Daiyu Islands, uh, wherever the heck those islands are. Uh, hey, I guess this map doesn't pick them up. Uh, but anyway, all the fighting over those islands and the resources, China, there's a lot of military uh, struggle back and forth between there and there. Uh, you know, that's that I've already covered, you know, in great depth. Plus, Taiwan is also trying to make a claim. Uh, South Korea is also added uh, in the... Uh, the, the uh, Daiyu Island, Daiyu Islands, Senkaku Islands, uh, they've also added an old fly, like they're overlapping with China's air, uh, air, air, uh, the zone where, you know, you're flying through Chinese airspace type of thing. Uh, they've added, Japan has added, uh, added that. So that, that one is, is, uh, you know, a big tug of war going on there. But we, uh, recently Canada, my country, has done something for the Arctic. Now, a lot of people will think, okay, my Prime Minister is probably the most camera-shy politician in history. Like, this man, he does speak in public and stuff like that, uh, but you very, very, uh, you never see him on the CBC. Uh, mind you, I don't think he likes the CBC very much, but, uh, you know, it's very rare that you will see them, see him speak in public. But one of the things he is passionate about is Arctic sovereignty, and a lot of people are not getting it. Like, they're getting the oil and the gas thing, of you know, okay, well, you know, we got, uh, you know, you know, all the oil sands and stuff like, like that around here, but there's 30% of the world's oil reserves up here. Um, so that means this country is very interested in it. And we also have Nor Norway and, and uh, Denmark, you know, and a part of the Green Greenland. Uh, they, they, they basically, uh, you know, they basically want to make claim to the Arctic too. Uh, it's kind of weird because you got to see this kind of more of a going around here. But all this territory here is... Russia can make claim to there for sure, but it's not just the, okay, this is so much outside our water. It's underneath what the claim is for Canada is that the shelf of the continent, you know, like this landmass actually ends up into the Arctic, okay? And what uh, our government has done is they had uh, something like uh, 40 different areas being researched. Um, I, I listened to... Uh, Prime Minister Harper, uh, talk about this uh, about five months, six months ago. I just found a video, it might have been five months, six months ago, that whatever they make the claim, they're going to, you know, use as much science and everything as possible. Now, Russia has already done a kind of a small, um, uh, well, they've done a couple of stunts. Uh, the biggest noticeable one is they took a submarine and they put a Russian flag on the Arctic shelf floor. This was about seven, eight, mo eight months ago. And that you know technically you could say is a stake to claim but it's not because uh what what has to happen is uh that uh you know uh whatever like the ice is right now in a melting mode okay and what what has to happen is is that you, you have to prove scientifically that yes your the shelf of your continent goes out xyz now the americans also want it so we have four major countries that are that are trying to make this claim and tens of countries around the world that are very interested in who's going to get what uh because this means a lot now with canada uh right around uh, uh where's baffin island here i'll find baffin island uh anyway the the, the the northwest passage going through going through around here okay they want to make we want we want this uh, to basically be, you know, part of Canada's territory. So that w w if ships and stuff start going through, uh, you have to ask permission. Now, right now, Canada wants to open all this up. They, they want to open this up for trade. The thing is, is that uh, it's not a great trade route. Uh, the reason why the Panama Canal is still used is because this is just too dangerous for a ship. You can't count on it. Uh, you can't count on the uh, ice being thawed up there. Uh, so that that's why... You know, uh, the Arctic is very, very difficult to uh, to uh, navigate. You know, uh, the only people that have kind of navigated the Arctic successfully 
uh, easily are the Inuit, and they use kayaks. You know, <laughs> so uh, you know, big ships. Uh, we, we know all the history of ships that are lost up in the Arctic. Uh, you know, and stuff like that. There's a lot, a lot of history up there. You know, way back into the 1800s. But the science is to say that the Arctic Shelf is ours, so that you know we don't want Russians drilling like here. We also don't want Russians setting up bases here. You know what I mean? Um, now. This is the first government that uh, is actually, in, in years since the Cold War, has actually taken interest in the Arctic sovereignty. And it is important that we do, because really, we don't want the Russians here. You know, there's a lot of people in Ottawa that think that, you know, they just don't really get it, what threat Russia could be. You know, uh, you don't want the Russians having that hold. You know, you, you, don't, you don't want them having that. I have nothing against the Russian people. Uh, I would love to visit Russia one day just to see it. It looks like... Uh, you know, you know, a lot of history there, a lot of interesting places. But on the other hand, I still don't want them living in my backyard either. Now, uh, the other thing is, is uh, what would we be giving up? Well, when Canada does drill and stuff like that, a lot of people like the oil sands, tar sands, depending on what you, where you stand on it, they basically have high regulation, okay? Canada is very high regulated. Uh, do we have spills and stuff like that? Yes, we do. But we'll say, for example... Uh, other countries that really have no regulations whatsoever. They don't take care of their environment. China does not take care of its environment. Um, and right now, most of our oil is getting exported to China. Um, and we have a lot of mining companies that are Chinese-owned, uh, which is, I also don't want China owning that either. But on the other hand, that could be our gateway to, uh, you know, again, it, it's, it, it's a resource that does secure Canada's, uh, you know, secure Canada's uh, future uh, for, for oil and stuff like that, and natural gas. There's a whole bunch of stuff up there. There's methane. There's, there's everything up there. Um, that's one of the biggest fears up there as well. The ice melting is too, too big of a release, release of methane. Um, there's a few huge methane pockets that the Russians are worried about. Um, but the problem is, is that we also don't want enemy warships going through our waters with impunity. Now, they have a small group of people up there called the, the, the Canadian Rangers. They're up there. They're basically like a patrol. They get a th 200 rounds, a 303 British, a green jacket, and uh, or a brown jacket, and a snowmobile, and they go patrolling. Basically, they're more like a search and rescue for people lost, you know, and they carried the 303 for uh, polar bear patrol. Very, very neat little and uh, inexpensive way to uh, keep the Arctic on, on vigilant. Now, the Canadian military, well, they've got, uh, I think it's the, the timber wolf or the wolf... Uh, brigade up there, and they, uh, uh, not brigade, but they, they're always training up in the Arctic anyway, they're, they're very, you know, the Canadians are very well adapted to the Arctic, uh, and right now we do have U.S. submarines, the, the, some, the Americans kind of want to acknowledge that, yes, that is Canadian territory, but they don't, because of, it's not about Canada and the United States, it's, it's not even about the resources, because Canada isn't claiming, uh, you know, like the Alaskan side, it's just claiming here, you know, like it's, 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 it's a big territory here that we want up to the North Pole because our, we can prove that our shelf goes that far. And, you know, like this map, you can't use this as a scientific basis, but you get the idea, like Greenland can also make the claim that that's a part of it, you know, but this is really brings us up to, you know, you know, like the science is telling us that our shelf goes like way up here, you know, you know what I mean? And, uh, uh, so with that, if, if uh, which I think we're getting going to get the claim, uh, we've brought it to, believe it or not, the United Nations. Um, I think in the end, this is going to be a big partnership for everybody working on the, you know, for the oil and stuff like that, which would be the the one to, you know, uh, make sure that uh, you know we don't get into a shooting war like they're going to get into down here. This is just an accident waiting to happen. The Chinese are not in control. The Japanese are not in control. People say, yeah, they're just posturing. Yes, they are posturing, but you know. The, the governments might be posturing. It doesn't mean the soldiers on the ground know what's exactly going on. They might start shooting at each other. Then you've got, you know, uh, I mean, martial law, I believe, is pretty much starting to be implemented in Japan. Uh, there's media blackouts. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's getting pretty severe over there. But this is kind of starting off the way this did. Uh, however, this has been a thing for years. Now, Russians and Canadians, our relationship is not what I would call, like, phenomenal. But we've always had a relationship because, well, we've always been in each other's backyards. I mean, Russian ships pass Canadian ships all the time. Now, one of the things about Arctic sovereignty is right now, we really have a handful of warships. Uh, we have, I think, a total of about 30 warships. 
That includes Coast Guards, that includes Icebreakers, that also includes, uh, you know, uh, Destroyers, or Frigates, I guess you would say. Um, and uh, they're old. Uh, they're, <coughs> they were replaced, I think, in the 1980s, there was a handful of them replaced, but many of these ships are getting old. And although they're, they got good equipment on it, they're, they're, they're outclassed. The, the Russians have about 200 ships to worry about and about 200 submarines to worry about. So, and they're up there all the time. You know, they, they do that. They, you know, the Northern Fleet, they're, they're up there all the time. And the uh, thing is, is Canada needs, needs new ships. So right now in Halifax, right down here, we have ships being built. Now, of course, they're going to be over budget and they're, you know, all that stuff. But the jobs, for the most part, are in... You know, like some outsourcing has to take place, unfortunately, uh, because we're not set up for that anymore. At one point, we, you know, uh, right after World War II, we had manufacturing for everything. We, we you know, we needed it. We built it. Um, the Cyclone, the 28 Cyclone helicopters, uh, Sikorsky Cyclone helicopters, are replacement for our Sea Kings. Uh, we finally, I think, got one uh, about a year ago as a kind of a, just to show you, but it's not the final variant. Uh, you know, uh, we're going to be suing uh, Sikorsky $8 million for late, late delivery. They're like about two years late or whatever, which two years, two years late isn't bad in the grander scheme of things, but it, it's been the worst procurement of, of anything in, uh, of uh, military equipment in Canadian history. Like it should not be that difficult. Um, the F-35, God knows where that one's going to end up. And I don't think the F-35 is really designed to be in the Arctic anyway. We have to redesign it. So again, we're almost better to tool up. Yes, it'll cost us probably about four times as much. But then when we want to tool up for something else, we can, you know, uh, think outside the box. Okay, well, how about we, uh, I mean, we do have things like, for example, Bombardier. And there's a couple of other manufacturers out west. Those places could be retooled to, to build our stuff. Now, as far as the ships are going, we're going to be having 20 or 21 new ships. I do believe some of them are going to be icebreakers. I do believe some of them are going to be frigates. I don't know what they're going to be, though. That's the thing. I couldn't really find out what are the warships going to be. I do know they're going to be new and they're going to be modern. Are they going to be IHs like the Americans? You know, are we just going to copy that design? Or are they going to be something completely Canadian adapted? I don't know. Uh, I couldn't seem to find anything on it. And I'm very curious if you know something on them, uh, please... Uh, Mention it, uh, you know, send a link. Uh, okay, I'm just going to pause it here. Okay, hi and welcome. I just want to get into it today. Got lots of stuff to cover. Uh, okay, um, the Arctic, Arctic sovereignty, use it or lose it. So uh, we're going to go to my country. And yes, this is a World War Three update. It, it's kind of uh, what you're seeing down here between, or sorry, between Japan and China over the Senkaku Daiyu Islands. Uh, Wherever the heck those islands are. Uh, hey, I guess this map doesn't pick them up. Uh, but anyway, all the fighting over those islands and the resources, China, there's a lot of military uh, struggle back and forth between there and there. Uh, you know, that's that I've already covered, you know, in great depth. Plus, Taiwan is also trying to make a claim. Uh, South Korea is also added uh, in the. Uh, the the uh, Daiyu Island, Daiyu Islands, Senkaku Islands, uh, they've also added an old flight, like they're overlapping with China's air, uh, air, air, uh, the zone where, you know, you're flying through Chinese airspace type of thing. Uh, they've added, Japan has added, uh, added that. So that, that one is, is, is uh, you know, a big tug of war going on there. But we uh, recently, Canada, my country, has done something for the Arctic. Now, a lot of people will think, okay, my prime minister is probably the most camera shy politician in history. Like this man, he does speak in public and stuff like that. Uh, but you very, very, uh, you never see him on the CBC. Uh, mind you, I don't think he likes the CBC very much. But, uh, you know, it's very rare that you will see them, see him speak in public. But one of the things he is passionate about is Arctic sovereignty. And a lot of people are not getting it. Like they're getting the oil and the gas thing, you know, 